Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. Which, this may seem random because it's like, what the hell is this movie talking about? Uh, this is a film that was sent to me. Which I didn't do in unpackaging because it's the only thing that was in there. Because it was a movie that I was going to talk about. Section 4, Straction. And the reason being, this is a film that was sent to me by someone who worked on this movie. Someone who worked on this film which is not the director star, the director and star is Olivier Gruner. Some people say Oliver Gruner, I don't care how you pronounce it, you pronounce it Oliver Gruner, Olivier Gruner, I'm just going to pronounce it Olivier Gruner because that's how it's spelled. But he directed it and he stars in it. But there, it's not him, but there's another person who was involved with this film, which I'm not going to mention, just I don't want to put him under the bus. Or her under the bus. And I'm not going to read this note that he wrote because, you know, it's personal. Because, you know, he wrote this for me. But I will mention that he swamped in the middle of working on his next, hopefully, much better movie. And this person is very nice. says he's been a fan of mine for a long time. I'll make sure to send you a copy when I'm part of a good movie one day. <laughs> Keep kicking ass on YouTube. And again, I'm not going to say who this person is because I don't want to put him under the bus because this person was very nice and kind. And we chatted for a little bit. And he talked about how this movie pretty much sucks. <laughs> I mean, again, that stuff I read that hopefully the next film I'm part of will be a much better movie <laughs> and hopefully a much better movie and a movie that doesn't suck and uh, which and he was like you know be honest so when I mean this person was part of the movie and again, I'm not gonna say who because I don't wanna put this person under the bus but when this person says that the movie sucks it's kinda it makes it easier for me to go about this movie and this is a film that gets like a 2.5 on him to be, and it deserves it. Now, Olivier Gruner, there's a lot of Olivier Gruner films that I enjoy. And I've reviewed. I reviewed Angel Town, and I enjoy Angel Town. I reviewed Automatic. I love Automatic. And that's a direct video film. Nemesis. I love Nemesis. I reviewed Nemesis and Automatic and, and uh, Angel Town and Savat. Where Mark Cena, the Beastmaster himself, is the bad guy. I enjoy Savat. I think Isaac Florentine directed that movie. Those are four movies I enjoy. And then there are movies that... Those are my four favorites. Uh, Automatic and Nemesis and Savat and Angel Town. Those are my four favorite Olivier Gruner films. I think... I believe I reviewed all four of them. And if I remember... If I remember... I might have a playlist, and if I remember, I'm going to put it down below the play, the link to the playlist. Or you just go on my channel and type in Olivier Gruner, or type in autom hell, type in automatic movie review. You're not going to find many people reviewed automatic, or Nemesis, or Savat. Except maybe, except me. But, then there's movies that he did that were okay. Mercenary, with Olivier Gruner and John Ritter. He did a directed video film, Mercenary 2, which I'm looking over there because it's only on VHS. It was there, but not a lot of action. But, you know, there's a little bit of... I forget who the guy's name. Oh, my God. The guy who's the meteor man. And, uh... Fuck, I forgot his name. Richard... God. I should just go over there and show it. But I can't remember where the hell I put it. Someone's going to put it down below. That'll be for you guys. You can put it down below. The guy who started the Meteor Man. I forget his name. But. And then there's been some pretty bad ones that he's done. Like Mars. Uh, there's a film called Savage. Which I have on VHS. Which is a weird movie. But it's not a particularly good movie. And I've seen a lot of Olivier Gruner films. And this is without a doubt one of his worst. I would say the worst, 
but I saw Rejuvenator, which had an interesting idea, Olivier Gruner as a killer, like a programmed killer, but that film was just absolute dog shit. I think that's that was on YouTube. Rejuvenator was horrible. And I don't know if he directed that. He might have. But this is definitely one of the worst. It is one of the cheapest Olivier Gruner films I've seen. This film is not a low-budget movie. It's a no-budget movie. It's a fucking no-budget movie. And people are like, well, what do you mean by no budget? There are scenes where it is completely fucking dark outside. And literally, the people, like Olivier Gruner and these people talk in... You do not see their face. You don't see anything. And sometimes, like, there's a scene later on in the film where Olivier Gruner is sneaking back in because he wants to get his buddies, rescue his buddies, and there's this sort of his, these allies there. And they talk to Olivier Gruner. One's, like, almost looking at the camera like this. If I turn off the light, that's exactly how it would be. And I should fucking do that. You know, I should fucking do that. This is what a lot of the scenes are like. I shit you not. This is how a lot of the fucking scenes are like. Okay? And even this is too much light. So if I go... Shit, this is even too much light. Literally, this is too much... There is more light here. Which actually, that's kind of cool. I There's actually quite a bit of light here. Huh. Never noticed that. I didn't actually do reviews like this. I did not notice that. Wow. Yeah, I didn't actually do reviews like this. Because you can actually wow. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't never see there's more fucking light here. My fucking webcam. This has better fucking light than the fucking movie does. This is nighttime, but imagine my face completely dark and shadow. And people looking at the camera. And the, the full face is shadow, like, sh fucking shadow, and they're talking to Olivier Gruner. And a lot of the fight scenes are in the fucking dark as well. So you just see a silhouette and a silhouette fight each other. And then you have muzzles that literally, there's a nice guy in there called Kentucky Contator. A long time ago I did these Dolph Lundgren movie reviews, which are no longer up because of copyright. But there was a piece of shit movie called Retroactive. I'm going to find the video and put it down below. Kentucky Contator took that review and had fun with it and made like a fun fake trailer. The muzzle flashes he put in in that video are better than this fucking movie. I better turn this back on because I just would rather have light on. But, because I thought it was going to be darker than it was, but it wasn't. But god damn, man. This fucking movie. And if you're wondering, I'm doing a bunch of reviews on the same day. So if you notice if I have the same shirt and stuff. Sometimes I do the same stuff in one go. And that way I have it there and then I just upload. I can save it and upload it later. But I just do it all at the same time. Which, you know, just saves time. But. Set to four extraction. Okay, it's about... Olivier Gruner, PMC, Private Military Op Contractor. And there's a very boring narrator by Olivier Gruner, narration about there's no one left behind. Mala by Olivier Gruner. And the way he's doing this prologue, it almost smells like pretentious. Pretentious bullshit. Because he's making this film seem like it's fucking the next Saving Private Ryan when that's not the case. And from what the person making this film, who was part of this film, this person mentioned that there was an un, an original, that the script was changed, and that originally it was sort of more of a old to 80s, 90s action films. But no, this is like more pretentious shit. This is like some of, the, some of the shit that Steven Seagal does nowadays when it should be just a fun 80s movie. No, Seagal sometimes thinks he's fucking pretentious and shit. Of course, that's coming from the guy who did Under the Ground. Where he, I like Under the Ground I liked because at least has some fun action. But the pretentious shit is pretentious shit. Like this fucking 10-minute monologue about oil. 
even though he blew up a fucking oil <laughs> refinery. Anyway, but I'd take On Daily Ground over this, because On Daily Ground actually had some fun action. And actually, to say I like On Daily Ground because of the action. This, you can't even do that. There's barely any action. When the action happens, it's fucking people and only silhouettes because it's, when it's outside, there's no lights. There's no fucking lights anywhere. Even the face is fucking dark. Everything is dark. I don't mean dark like they painted it in black. Paint. Camouflage. I mean completely dark. Shadow. But yeah, this monologue by Olivia Droner about PMC, private military contractor, and then you have a text telling the shit that we just heard from Olivia Droner's monologue about what a PMC is. I mean, you just tell the shit that we already fucking knew when Olivier Gruner, we got the idea when he did his monologue. Now we have text about it. And this is not the only time they do this this shit. Where, throughout the film, Sector 4, literally there's about four or five times where either someone with a microphone who's a newscaster or someone else tells about how dangerous Sector 4 is. We got it the first time. Even the second time. And pretty much... Olivier Gruner and these three other guys that don't go in, they get this Al Qaeda guy. They sneak in, they have a fucking firefight, they're so goddamn dark with these horrendous muzzle flashes, CGI explosions. Again, this is a no budget film, and I don't know why they decided to film this on $2.47 budget. I see PM Entertainment Films, hell, Guyver 2 Dark Hero, that costs what? $500,000? At most, Garver 2 Dark Hero actually has creatures and kick ass suits and kick ass already fights. This has nothing. You're telling me this film wasn't even filled for $500,000? If it was, someone got ripped off. Just look at Garver 2 Dark Hero. Hell, Drive or Marta Costas, they had a $3 million budget. Watch that film, see how much they have. I've seen direct to video Dolph Wonder films. There's a film that he did with Jerry Springer, which I know sounds funny, but it's actually a pretty entertaining film called The Defender. Dolph Lundgren was good, had a lot of action. That is more an 80s film than this. And if the script was originally one way and it got changed to this, I feel sorry for that. It's bullshit. Fucking bullshit. I can't help but wonder what the writer feels like, if that's the case. Just as one person says, oh yeah, this is a, I don't wonder what the writer feels like. Shit. Uh, and, and in case people are like, well, who is the... I'm not going to mention it, because I don't want to throw this person under the bus. But... But I mentioned it, because, you know, the guy was a nice guy. I'll mention that, it was a guy. But hell, most of the people in this crew is a guy. But... Firefight, too damn dark. Ugh, fights. Just like, I guess Olivier Gruner doesn't do martial art kicks anymore like he did back in the day. He does more of MMA, like, like grapples. He doesn't really do much of the, you know, you see in a lot of films, like, he do these martial arts kits. Hell, look at Angel Town. He does, like, a hundred kicks in that movie. Sometimes he'll kick a guy, like, ten times. Boom, 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 boom. Hell, fucking Interceptor Force had better action. Was it Inter Was that what it was? I forget what the hell it was called. I think it was that. I'd rather watch... That was better than this movie. And that's a sci-fi channel movie. I'd rather watch that than this. Because even the fights are shot piss, like pitch black. So you can't see anything but silhouettes. And then the team gets separated... Olivier Gruner goes, I'm coming for you. And then it cuts to a bunch of moms making pizza and talking about sex. So literally, oh shit, it hit the fan. Olivier Gruner, I'm coming to get you. And then it cuts to moms cutting pizza for their kids and talking about sex. Oh, when my man gets home, I can't wait to have, can't wait to have sex. I'll give you some room. You can sit on my face. 
I mean, and then it cuts back to Olivia Gruner captured. You don't even know how the fuck you got captured. I'm like, how did that even happen? It was awkward. He trips one and kids fights a couple and that piss poor lighting, the camera work didn't help matters either. Cause like there's a scene where Olivia Gruner and them are like way back here and the camera like literally the camera's is like this. And the fight's like all the way over here and back. So I don't uh, I don't want to say camera work, but like camera the way it's set up, shouldn't you move that to here? And have some better lighting so that Olivia Gruner can show what he can do. And even then most of it's just typical like grappling stuff. But it was piss poor fight choreography and especially piss poor lighting and camera work. He escapes, he walks in the desert, gets home. Um, his the kid who plays his son is his real life son. And then he trains for, I swear, he trains, it feels like 20 minutes that he trains. And then at first I'm like, well, wait a minute. Isn't he... Actually, wait, wait. He trains for a little bit because he, he's uh, like in an MMA ring. That's right. Not yet. He's in like an MMA ring and he's training for a little bit. Which I didn't mind that. Okay, he's in an MMA ring. Wow, because he's actually... We can actually see what's going on. That that always helps in fights, by the way, when you actually can see what the fuck's going on. That that's a good tidbit, good tidbit, to actually see what's going on, not be so dark that I literally need to buy a pair of infrared goggles to see the fucking movie. Because then he gets this stupid thing where he gets this email. Oh yeah, I should. Sure I don't. I forgot. Eric Roberts is in this movie, and he actually gets top billing. Eric Roberts, and you can tell Eric Roberts probably shot this movie in only one or two days max, because he has like the same clothes on, and he, pretty much in the same office. It probably was one day. I wouldn't be surprised if it was one day, because pretty much just him talking on the phone or talking to Olivia Gruner. Hell, when Olivia Gruner, he comes in. Once sort of in the middle, and once at the end of the film, he's like wearing the same fuzz and same hat. So you know, like Eric Roberts probably there only like one or two days, two days max, probably one day. But Eric Roberts really has a nothing role. <laughs> but Olivier Dorn gets his email saying that the three men are going to be killed on TV, and. The reason I have to bring this up is that Olivier Gruner's ex is a bitch. I don't know the actress. I'm talking about the character. is such a bitch because she is bitching that taking his kid to the Grand Canyon should give priority over his three friends who are going to get their fucking heads cut off. It's like, you don't need to do that. You told your son you don't take him to the Grand Canyon. Forget about that. You just want to do it because you want to be a hero. Yeah, he wants to save his three buddies who are going to get their heads cut off. God forbid that he's not thinking of taking his kid to the fucking Grand Canyon when his three buddies are over there, overseas, and going to get their heads cut off. Yeah, woman. Shame on him. Slap a ruler on his dick. What the fuck is this bullshit? What the fuck? <laughs> and that's when you get the training that feels like it's like 20 minutes of training. Because, which is weird because I thought he was already trained in combat because he's a private military contractor, but I guess he's training some more. But okay, we've seen that a lot of movies. People train, okay. But... It doesn't help that this training scene, and I love training scenes. Rocky IV, best training scenes ever, montages. But hell, it doesn't have any cool music during, during it. The fucking camera itself looked, I don't know, the footage looks just cheap. I don't know how, it looks like a no budget movie. I don't know how to describe that. It's a shitload of. Disarming and pulling out a gun. Like, literally, 
You could probably have three, four times where he disarms and then three, four times where he pulls out a gun. No, literally this is like two dozen times that he does the same thing. He disarms, 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 and then another two dozen times of pulling out the gun, 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 pulling out the gun. Pulling out the gun, pulling the gun. You see how long that took? I guarantee you there are people watching who thought, hmm, I wish this had a fast forward button. Let me skip to when he's done talking about pulling out the gun. That's what I felt watching this fucking scene. And then sometimes he's making noises while doing it. Like literally, are you doing the ch-ch? Why are you doing the ch, -ch? Isn't it what you know you're supposed to do with sound mix? You're actually doing the ch, ch Do okay, do real people do that? Like, okay, I can do this. But if I'm making a real movie, I shouldn't have a gun and go. Why? Okay. He had more fucking training. Like he's uh, shooting a gun. And lo and behold, of course, the next scene, well, not the next scene, but you have some little boring stuff. He meets this one guy. He's able to get overseas, I guess. Um, and lo and behold, he gets held up and he disarms and he pulls out his gun. Who would have thunk it? No wonder they had he showed you know two dozen times of doing those two things. This the next time this, if you want to call it an action, it's just like two assholes who want to steal his ride. Disarms, pulls out a gun, tells him to leave. Exciting, finds the plane, steals it, arrives. Disarms one guy. Meets those allies where. They talk with no faces, and at times talk to the camera, and there's a fucking blue light behind them. I'm like, Jesus Christ, is this fucking Men in Black? The horror film version? And it's a fucking lackluster, anticlimactic ending. Because he sneaks in, he goes underwater, Goes in this cave. By this time, there's only two guys, because one of them tried to make a run for it and got shot. Well, he, he got shot in the leg, and then you get the idea that they cut his head off, but they don't, you don't really see it. Just get the idea of it. So there's two guys left. Ole Gurner takes a couple out in really shitty lighting. You have this really shitty firefight and poor lighting. You can't see anything that's going on. Oh, wait a minute. I remember I said, kind of said that stuff on Olympus Has Fallen. Olympus Has Fallen, the, some of the fighting was like, I had a squint. No, this one, literally, you need infrared to see what the fuck's going on. You see silhouette and that... I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. You can't see the people's faces. Literally, you can't see the people's faces and the muzzles are fucking fake. I've seen people... Who work who are on YouTube do better muzzle flashes. Kentucky Container did better muzzle flashes. I'll show the video down below in the link. One gets shot, he saves one. And then there's like a reporter who's talking about stuff like whereabouts of Osama bin Laden, still unknown. And I went, Osama bin Laden, still unknown? And this is a 2014 movie? Isn't Osama Bin Laden dead? Is this a period piece movie that I didn't get until the ending of the film? Did it show that it was a film that's supposed to take place years ago? Did I miss something? And yet again, someone has to remind us that Sector 4 is a dangerous place. We did it! And oh look at the ending, he took his kid to the Grand Canyon. 
And he talks about how I'm never leave you behind again. And when he says again, you barely hear it. I need to never leave you behind again. He, you barely hear the again because that's when the end credits starts. This movie is a pile of shit. It is one of the worst Olivia. It is this and Rejuvenator are the worst Olivia Gruner films I've ever seen. It's no budget. There's not a single. There's not a single good thing I can say about this movie. It deserves a 2.5 on IMDb. It gets a. There's a lot of films that get low ratings that I can play about on IMDb. There's a reason why this gets a 2.5 on IMDb. How I've seen plenty of Steven Seagal films that are better than this, and that's sad. Because Steven Seagal has made a lot of bad movies. But even films like Into the Sun and fucking Urban Justice. Or what is it, Urban? Fuck yeah. I'm thinking about Steven Seagal directed video movies. If you've never seen Olivia Gruner film, do not watch this as your first one. Watch Nemesis and Automatic and Angel Town and then Savat and even Mercenary. This one is cheap jack production value from the camera, the lighting. This is some of the worst lighting I've ever seen in an action film to date. The worst lighting. Is when it's dark out, you don't see their faces, you can't tell what the fuck's happening in the action. Some of the worst lighting ever in an action movie I have ever seen in a movie. Uh, nothing to the characters. The training scenes were boring. The music was dull. I can't remember any of the fucking music. Michael Sean Colin. The some of the stuff I doesn't make it felt pretentious. Like, it is a film that thinks it's more important than it is. Like, maybe if this was like a fun 80s, 90s action film throwback. Like, even some of, like, you look at Dolph Hunter films. A lot of those, look at uh, Command Performance. Hell, the upcoming film he has, Skin Trade. With him and Tony Jaw and, and Peter Weller and Michael Jai White. That looks like a fucking $100 million budget film compared to this. That's a film I look forward to, Skin Trade. This film, there's not one redeemable quality to this film. Not a single one. So, you know, if the guy's watching, I apologize. I have nothing against him. But this film, there's not one redeemable thing. Not a single redeemable quality. It is horrendous. It is... Not... Such a boring fucking movie. Boring fucking film. One of Olivier Gruner's worst fucking films. I don't understand how he can direct the film that looks this fucking no budget. That barely has fights. And the teeny tiny fights you have, you barely see shit. He disarms and okay, you dis you're great, you disarm you can disarm. How about she fucking fight like you did in Savat and Angel Town and Nemesis and Automatic? God forbid, Dolph Lundgren's still doing that stuff. In Van Dam. Uh, I got nothing else I can say about this. Thanks for watching, take care, and fuck this movie.